All right, folks, I wanted to finish out section one by talking to you about modern country and rock. Now, guys, when I think about these two subgenres, actually what I think about is a different style of playing rhythm, a different way of playing rhythm. Now, you've learned all of the, uh, you know, all of these little segments of learning how to play rhythm the Johnny Highland way, which is great, and I hope you use it, uh, use all those things to help you in your rhythm. But you can utilize everything that you've learned thus far in modern country and in rock, and I'll show you how to do that. But one thing that I would love to talk to you about, especially with rock and modern country, is the fact that I love finding, using the double stops to find different ways to play chords. So for an example, if we were playing a, uh, if we were playing a straight ahead rock, all I'm doing here is I'm playing, instead of playing, I'm not playing a real straight ahead kind of rock like that. I'm playing more of a... So I'm using the flat 7 note to a minor 3rd and I'm pulling it up to a major. Now, to finish that out, what I did is I played this. Actually, folks, there are two notes played simultaneously, which makes up a double stop. So my A double stop is here, which is a bar on the A and D string 7th fret. Now I can bounce off that. So if you wanted to do the Danny thing where you kept the A droning on the bottom, and then... And that's a great way for you to connect the uh, minor scale, minor pentatonics, whatever you want to connect for a scale that sounds more rock oriented, especially where we're kind of playing off of a minor chord. So I love using the double stops for rock because distortion kind of helps, you know, helps growl out those notes. <laughs> So if you have an A chord, you won't really hear the low drone of that A on the bottom, but you'll feel it. Now, what am I doing here? I'm actually moving that A to where I'm... So I'm barring on the 5th fret and 7th fret A and D string. Now I'm down on the D and G string on the 5th and 7th, which is like a D. Then I'm sliding in with my 2nd uh, and 3rd finger on the G string to the 8th and ninth fret. Reaching down with my 2nd finger to the 8th fret B string, where I'm actually able to... So it gives you movement to your rock playing, which is really cool. So So you can see how it's giving you a more a tighter kind of feel, tighter vibe. And actually for rock music, that's what you want. You want that movement and you want that tighter feel and you want the distortion to really do the work for you. Now outside of actually utilizing those techniques that I just taught you here, my rock plan is simply made up of 
kind of the way I play blues, where I'm... And of course, I also sometimes will use finger picking, like when I went to the G, I went... So you can finger pick, and I'm adding a, like a G sus2 in there. And then I'm just kind of going from the finger picking back into that rock style where I'm playing real staccato and tight. Now what I want to do is I want to add a little delay and show you how full this really sounds. So check this out, guys. If you go... kind of feel and that's great of course there are distortion pedals out there like right now I'm using my signature Johnny Highland grumble box with metal pedals and of course that, that gives me quite a lot of dirt but I also have a pedal called the JH3 which is my main signature distortion pedal with metal pedals and it gives me more heavier sounding distortion so if I kick that on um, what that's going to do is get that same thing that we just played to sound even thicker and heavier. So you can hear it makes it real heavy, you know. So, what this really tells you folks is, get yourself a great distortion pedal, get yourself a good blues distortion pedal, because you don't want something quite as heavy when you play blues, and then learn the techniques that I showed you where you use the double stops to help make chordal tones. Now you can move those, you can continue to move those. Playing. Now what I'm doing is I'm changing that to make the, the actual double stop like the first part of a chord. So now I'm using the A and the E. Fifth fret and seventh fret on the, on the A string, right? Now move those around. So there's all different kind of cool ways you can use double stops to create rock. So getting back to it one more time, get a great distortion pedal. Utilize those techniques of using double stops in your rock plan. Then add some single note finger picking to it, to the other chords that you're playing around it. And then, of course, make sure you play good fills and good rock leads, you know, where you use finger tapping and dive bombs with a whammy bar and all that. Or even you can actually pull out a slide, play some cool slide parts, too. But, folks, the rhythm aspect of rock is very much... Uh, in your hands because everybody's distortion sound is going to be different some people are going to like speed metal where it's all you know single note stuff where you're playing really fast and then you're going to have guys that like 80s rock like myself you like satriani steve Vai, guys like that some guys like to mix their blues playing with their rock stuff the harder rock stuff look this what i'm really trying to say guys is rhythm guitar as a lead player is really up to the person that's playing so it's really up to you in the long run how you want to approach this for yourself I've just essentially in this video showed you what I actually do to play proper rhythm and of course a lot of people have said to me in the past you know when I did sessions in Nashville man I love your shuffle country shuffle rhythm or man I love your finger picking you did on that Randy Travis tune or you know dude I love the chicken picking you did on the Toby Keith record and, and of course the rhythm all added to the uh, to the full embodiment of what I added to the track when I was in the studio. So when people think of Johnny Highland, they think, oh man, I want all them chicken picking licks. 
that's great. But you know what, guys? I'm actually finishing out by giving you the meat and taters behind my plan. So now, if you get 10-gallon guitar part one, and then you get this rhythm video, you're going to basically have the nuts and bolts to my entire uh, playing style. And you know what, guys? I'm not afraid to give it to you because I want you to turn it into your style. It's important. And I'm just so tickled and honored that True Fire is here to give you all kinds of different videos that will help you to grow into the player that you want to be. I'm just proud to be a part of the, of the lineage of great players that are a part of True Fire, and I thank these guys for the opportunity. So now we're going to get ready and move on to Section 2 with the band tracks. <laughs> 